Guys, how's it going? Welcome back. My name is John. This is my biker wife, Alexandra. We are motorcycle travelers. And quite recently, my wife, tired of lugging around on the back of my bike, decided to treat herself to a front row seat on board her brand new Triumph Trident 660. Six months ownership and 6,000 kilometers later, during our most recent trip of the Ruta de la Plata that took us along sub-zero temperatures, rain and some dirt road tracks, my wife feels it may be time to trade the Trident for something with a little more weather protection and also a little more off-road capability. With our next trip already planned, that will once again take us into the cold and through some dirt roads, I think we can all agree it is a sensible decision. Me, still riding around on my trusty 2004 V-Strom 1000, although it's never let me down before, it is however aging with over 100,000 kilometers on the clock, so maybe it's time for me to move on also. So this means that, during these next months I am going to be test riding as many bikes as possible to then decide if we trade, what we trade for, and why we choose a specific bike over another. As I am hoping to try out quite a few bikes, to make it easier for me to decide which one is the best for our traveling needs, I am going to classify each feature I find most important and sum them up all into a final score. The classification will be very simple, ranging from a bad to overwhelming, where one point will be attributed to something really really very bad, and five points to something that would literally blow my mind, which will not be easy. So guys, if it seems like this series may interest you, please stay tuned to find out which bike we choose as the best adventure touring motorcycle. As you may know if you watched my last video, straight off the Tiger 660, I jumped on board the 850. And my immediate reaction was this stupid little giggle, <laughs> which I think says a lot. I know it's hard, if not impossible to believe by looking at this lofty bike in the showroom alongside the slick and compact 660, but taking off, I felt this bike to be just as nimble as its smaller sibling, but now has some proper talk to back up its title. After all, this is a tiger. This is how a tiger should make you feel. Same route as before, same roundabouts, and I was astonished at how well the 850 oh, just fell into them. Yes. yes, even better than the 660, and its forthcomings did not stop there, so make sure you watch the entire video and also my Tiger 660 review before cashing in on any of these two great machines. Lighting is LED all around. The dash is a 5 inch TFT screen with all the essential information, which allows you to choose between four different display settings if you like that kind of personalization. I honestly don't think much for those gimmicks, I'm here to ride not to look at screens, so I would happily trade those four display settings for a certain screw on the rear suspension. The Tiger 850 has two configurable riding modes, road and rain, traction control that can be switched off as long as the engine is off also, but you do get stuck with ABS always on. Modes and functions are mostly toggled with the odd joystick of the left controller, but the home button moved on to the right. I like the color contrast, but personally I prefer the control panel with the buttons all on the same side of the 660. With a tank size of 20 litres, you should get a range of over 300 kilometres at highway speeds. But once again, you will always have to leave your hand on the throttle because cruise control isn't even an option. The Triumph website offers over 60 accessories for this motorcycle so you can kit it up exactly to your needs. Just like a cheap flight, with the Tiger 850 you get a very basic but competent package for a good price and then you can just throw on the upgrades you really need. I think that's the best way to sell bikes because only the rider knows exactly what he really needs and should not be forced to pay for more. Let's get into some specs. In the engine bay we now have an 888 cubic centimeter T-plane crank engine that to cut a long story short sounds like a twin, goes like a twin and I loved it. With 85 brake horsepower, yes it's only 4 horses higher than the 660, but now that power comes in at 8500 RPM just after the full 82 Newton meters have done their thing at 6500, which translates into little to no power dips, and that for me is what makes a motorcycle so great to ride. I take low down torque over high revving power any day. Once again, it's not going to rip your head off on acceleration, but it's a very tidy unit that will allow you to effortlessly shoot around town and overtake cars quicker but more relaxed than the 660, where in comparison, you'll need to spool up to get the same power. Score. 
Guys, please do not forget what I said in the beginning. These scores are my personal classifications only with the sole intent of making it easier to choose our next bikes and for our specific real life needs as motorcycle travelers. This is not a comparison neither between bikes, neither between brands, and I will have both middleweight and heavyweight motorcycles here, where in the real world, in our reality, bigger may not be better. So for engine. This 888 unit is a real treat. Smooth but instantly powerful exactly where I like it, and if I said the Tiger 660 had more power than most people would ever need, on this bike I enforce my statement but pushing that certainty up a notch. In the real world, for traveling, you will not need more power than this. But I cannot give this engine a 4 because I'm an idiot. The irresponsible youth inside me still craves for crazy front wheel lift upon acceleration and as spiffy as this bike is, and indeed it is, it just doesn't meet my adrenaline needs. Don't get me wrong, the front wheel will still come up on first gear acceleration easy, but my V-Strom gives me more and now I just find it hard to go back. But I also cannot give it a 3 because that was the well deserved score I gave the Tiger 660. So. Although this was not the initial idea, I'm going to split it up and give this engine a 3.54 myself. But guys, if you don't see yourselves as I explained above, you can consider it a 4 because this is truly more than enough power. And before I forget, remember that annoying throttle blipping delay I spoke about on my Trident review? That carried out onto the Tiger 660, but fortunately not to this bike. Throttle response is as direct as it gets. So thank goodness for that. Just in case you're curious, from what I was told, the 900 model maps out an electronic 10 extra ponies from exactly the same engine, so you know what that means if you're interested. <coughs> Maintenance does however fall into the 10,000 km intervals, whilst the 660 engine has longer 16,000 km intervals, so that might be something to factor in. Stopping power is down to a fabulous pair of Brembo calipers. In the front we get four piston style Emma monoblocks biting on 320mm discs. Initial bike is smooth, which is exactly what you want on an adventure style bike that's meant to tackle some dirt from now and again. Just give it a little more one finger squeeze and you'll be spoiled for power. On the rear, a single pot mounted on a 255mm disc is more than up to the job, but you can't switch off ABS, which for me is quite important, because I like to be able to lock up the rear wheel to help straighten up the bike off-road when necessary. Despite this handicap, which will only be an issue for more aggressive off-road use, the brakes still get a 4, because I think they are very well suited for this bike. Suspension is supplied by Marzocchi. Inverted 45mm non-adjustable at the front with 180mm of travel and on the rear a manual spring load adjustable with this little tap here, monoshock with 170mm of travel. It's a very nice piece of kit in my opinion which helps soak up speed bumps with great ease and will also allow quite comfortable light off-roading straight out of the box. I did not however have a chance to try it out on some fast sweeping twisties, so I can't really comment on that, but as supple as it was, obviously leaning towards comfort, I suspect it may be a little softer when the going gets rough, and that's where some compression adjustability would have come in handy. But it's a solid unit, very competent at soaking up potholes on the road, so it's getting a 3, which means good. Tires are 150, 70, 17 on the rear and the 190, 19 on the front obviously helps the bike glide over the rougher stuff. Now on the bike. To be frankly honest, I felt very, very at home on this bike. I loved the seating position, legs were at a perfect angle, the handlebars were also at just the right distance for my height, which gave me a great sensation of space. With also perfect, I could see myself traveling to the end of the world on this bike. The seat has two adjustable height positions, 810 or 830 millimeters. My test rider was down to 810 millimeters and I could easily flat foot this bike whilst maneuvering. Turn radius is also great and a 220-ish wet weight is unnoticeable due to the very low center of gravity. Once again, this Tiger does not have the heavy feel associated to big adventure bikes. 
I felt this bike easier to flat foot maneuver than the 660, so due to the lower seat height and the increased turn radius, I'll have to give this bike a 4 because for me it was excellent. And Triumph even have an optional lower seat that will bring you down another 20mm if you feel you need it. How crazy is that? The seat is a little on the firm side, but it's nice and flat with lots of room to move around. Narrow against the tank and wide enough towards the rear to offer good bottom support which from my experience is more important than the quality of the cushioning. From what I understood, there is some storage under the front seat and also a basic tool set tied onto the rear, but I didn't have the heart to trouble the salesman to show me everything in detail, so I am sorry for that. I'm going to give Comfort a 4 because I felt very, very comfortable and relaxed on this bike. Leg protection. The front fairings of the Tiger 850 are a little wider than of the 660 and therefore offer a little more weather protection for your legs, which is always very welcome when traveling. Leg protection gets a 3, which means good. On my 30 minute ride, I felt more leg heat than I would have liked and all due to these little openings here that just so happen to house the radiator and fans. Now I know it's great to have in cold environments and I would have loved it on our last trip where we experienced sub-zero temperatures, but living in the Algarve, where temperatures average mid-30s in the summer, I'm not too sure I'd feel very comfortable. Personally, I prefer to feel as less engine heat on my legs as possible. But this design did however give me an idea. If by any chance any Triumph engineers view this video, what would you guys think about installing some vents in these openings here? It seems like you've acknowledged this issue and have thrived to solve it on the upcoming 1200 model which is fantastic, but I mean this design is already a part of the bike and I think it just needs to be applied accordingly. I'm not sure if it has ever been done on an adventure bike before, but it would be the best of both worlds. Cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter, I think it would be a great feature to have on these kinds of bikes that are the most likely to travel the world and the very different environments. It would certainly rank up points in my book, that's for sure, but just don't forget to credit me if you use this idea on your next adventure bikes. But until that's solved, although the heat didn't burn my legs and was actually quite pleasant for the 70 degrees Celsius day, I am going to have to give it a 2, which means okay, mind you, because I just prefer as little heat as possible, but you may like it. Regarding protection, I've found the minimalistic screen to work exceptionally well. Easily adjustable whilst riding, you just push it forwards then up or down to your desired position. To my surprise, none of the positions cause neither much wind noise, neither much buffeting, so wind buffeting gets a 3 because it's good, but discreetly there nevertheless. I felt just as comfortable standing on this bike as I did the 660. The pegs are however wider and rubberized, which will probably give it the upper hand off-road, but I didn't spend enough time exploring the wilderness to better assess the difference. Due to the pegs, I'm giving it a 3.5, which will help my final analysis. As I said in the beginning of this review, I was utterly amazed with the flickability of this bike. Due to its size, I was of course expecting it to be less nimble than the 660, which was not the case, and I also felt this bike dive better into corners. No doubt a positive oh, consequence yes. of the slimmer tyres when compared to the FAT 180 on the rear of the 660, but also due to the longer wheelbase that offers a greater sense of stability, and of course, the engineers at Triumph got the geometry of this bike just perfect. My short off-road excursion, if anything, enforced this idea. So with the time I spent with these two bikes, I'm equaling the Tiger 850 also to a 4, because to my mind, they were equally nimble. I was just more surprised with the 850, because its size suggested otherwise. Now for looks. To be very honest, I am not a fan of beaks. For some unknown reason, over the last years, many brands have been copying a certain design because they think what sells adventure-styled motorbikes are beaks, when in reality, what gets a certain model sold is its desirable badge. To me, the Tiger 660 is one of the most, if not the most, sexy adventure-style bikes on the market today, and I would love to see it in other flavors, if you know what I mean. <laughs> the 850, well, not so much. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't look bad and actually has some nice angles, but in my eyes, it's just not a great looking bike. Maybe it's the two color paint scheme that further emphasizes the silly beak, but of course beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, so it's just my opinion. So for looks, this bike gets a two, which is okay I guess. Now let's go to the scoreboard and compare this Tiger to its smaller brother. 
The engine is bigger and almost logically has more usable torque than the 660. It's not overwhelming, but it's just more relaxing to ride due to the power being exactly where you want it in real life, so I gave engine a 3.5. Brakes are perfect for this bike. I honestly don't think they brake better than the 660 that has more initial bite from the Nissan calipers, which is just what you want for road use. The 850 gets a more doseable bite, which I find to be perfect for a motorcycle that should tread dirt once in a while. If you need more power, just squeeze the lever a little tighter and power you will have. So brakes also got a 4. Marzocchi has been made responsible for the suspension, which works fine. Better and more progressive than the 660, I gave it a 3 because it's good. At my height, foot down maneuverability was made more relaxed due to the lower seat height and increased steering angle wing compared to the Tiger 660. So once again, I had to rate this higher at an almost perfect score of 4. I had no issue with the comfort on the Tiger 660, but found the 850 to be roomier for my height and arm length, so I gave comfort a 4. And again, leg protection against the elements is something I value whilst traveling, so as the fairings are a little wider, this bike got a 3 for leg protection. I don't like engine heat on my legs unless it's useful. This bike sends quite a bit of hot air from the radiators to your upper legs, and some closable vents would make this feature perfect. There are however no vents, so legs will always receive some heat. I don't appreciate that, so I gave engine heat a 2, but it may be different for you. I felt much less wind noise and buffeting on this bike than I did the 660. It's not perfect, I've witnessed better, but it's good, so buffeting got a 3. Unfortunately, I forgot to film myself going around the Triumph Algarve car park standing up on the 850, and I'll take the opportunity to thank them for lending me these two bikes. But standing is a feature I value for my specific needs, so the off-road section was all done on the pegs, which gave me a good feel for the position, which was fine. I rated the standing position half a point higher than on the 660 at 3.5 points just because the pegs are wider and rubberized. I was not expecting a bike of this size to be so agile, so I was quite surprised as I explained early in the video. I rated the GLT the same score I gave the 660 at 4 points. I don't like beaks on motorcycles and they are very hard to pull off apart from a very select few that managed to get it more or less right. The Tiger 660 is a very sexy motorcycle in my eyes and I gave it a solid 4. But the 850, I'm sorry, I would have loved to love the looks, but that front beak just did not do it for me and that two-toned paint scheme makes that pecker stand out more than it should, so for looks, in my eyes, the 850 scratches off a 2 and only because it looks nice from other angles. Nevertheless, this brings the Tiger 850 to a deserved first place with a total score of 36 points, which for our specific traveling needs means it would be the bike to get were there no other options. But there are, and plenty. However, out of the two, this score does not mean the 850 is the bike for you. Do not forget we are motorcycle travelers and we have certain needs that the 850 just better fulfills. If you're a Triumph fanboy or fangirl and you're looking into a Tiger but just need a bike to commute to town for the occasional trip now and again, and most importantly, you love to drink your morning coffee in the garage gazing upon your sexy motorcycle, you will not go wrong with the 660 because its downfalls are not compromising. On the other hand, if like us you like to ride for weeks on end, exploring the world and riding some of the most iconic roads and routes, then the 850 will give you the extra comfort and off-road capability to get there with just a little more finesse. And all this rates the Tiger 850 as a very strong contender for my wife's next bike. I'm not so certain for myself because it lacks suspension adjustability and power to reel in sports bikes on the twisties, which is something the Vistron 1000 does surprisingly well. The 150 horsepower and 130 newton meter Tiger 1200 is just around the corner and may be a better contender if for some reason we choose the Triumph route. Who knows, Triumph Portugal willing, I might even manage to squeeze it into this series. It is however 20 kilos heavier, bringing us to a wet weight of 240 kilos, and the seat height is up to 850 millimeters, with the possibility of bringing it down to 830 with the optional lowered seat. And although those two features do not please me very much, I am still quite curious to meet the beast in person, because that engine does sound very juicy, and the shaft drive offers undisputed peace of mind for us travelers. 
For now, lined up for my next test are the Tracer 7, which I will review and compare directly to the Tiger 660, the Tracer 9, and I also already have a Multistrada 950S test ride booked, which is the same as saying the Multistrada V2, so things are looking very smart on our quest to find the best adventure touring motorcycle. See you in the next one.